everyone. Welcome to Evening TV. I'm Evening Ransom Scar. Um, I didn't know anything about narcissistic abuse. I was raised by a narcissistic family. I married a sociopath, a diagnosed sociopath. Um, I went through just a horrible divorce, made every mistake in the book. I got, got estranged from my family, lost everyone, lost every penny I made, lost everything. Was left basically destitute with nothing but these two ki two traumatized kids. Son, my oldest son was the scapegoat. He took, I was the scapegoat and he took my role as a scapegoat with the family once I was estranged. And my other son was the invisible child. He just became, just ignored, invisible child. My eldest son was uh, a performer, he was a musician, he was a rebel, he was an artist, he was, you know, very avant-garde, he was outgoing, he had tons of friends. And his brother was born into this situation where he had this very uh, gregarious father who was always, you know, very dominating, had the whole Jekyll and Hyde thing going on when they were out public. And then he also had this brother who was very, very outgoing. And so he probably was born with a little bit of an, an introverted nature, a little bit of a quiet nature. He was very accustomed to sort of taking the back seat and sort of, you know, letting someone else decide what to do. And he was just sort of easy going in that way. He had them, you know, time with them on his own, which was very worrisome because when we were together, he would never be alone with the kids. He uh, got a lot more assistance supply out of taunting my eldest son because he was, he was very, they're both very sensitive, but he was more emotional and more, uh, got angry and got upset and got very much wanted his dad's approval. My other son was just quieter. He was quieter, he was more conservative, he was more just mainstream blending kind of kid. He didn't really, he just didn't, it didn't give him a lot of narcissistic supply. He was just basically ignored just basically the invisible child. My son started dealing with a drug addiction. It was no surprise to me that that happened because family, especially his dad, were basically trying to make that happen all the time. Another way that my son became the invisible child was I too was caught up in all this all this drama and all this chaos on purpose. I mean, there, you will have, you know, if you have a look at narcissistic parent, that's one thing, but if the other parent is just under all kinds of stress and strain and you know because all their money's been stolen and their name's been smeared and their house has been taken and all of this kind of stuff I was definitely preoccupied trying to put out fires and then of course I had this other son who was you know dealing with a life or death addiction and that was you know with with my with my younger son it was like I knew I could tell he was struggling but it wasn't going to kill him right now you know, so it's almost like, I just gotta get, I gotta get your brother to uh, solid footing and then I'll come back. You know, that was always what it was, always what it was gonna be. You know, there was just a lot of focus on his older brother. First, there was a lot of focus on their dad and trying to fix my life and get all the, you know, trying to deal with all the issues that they were throwing at me and then, uh, and then the brother. And so now the, the really visible older child is gone. And there's a whole bunch of things with that because the whole family, of course, is invalidating. It'll, it'll invalidate all of his experiences. I can validate them, but I wasn't there for everything. You know, his brother, you know, they would go, they would do everything together. I can validate just because I know who these people are and I know what they do. And a lot of times he'll tell me stories where he doesn't even know there's anything wrong with what he's saying. And I'll be like, that is terrible. That's very abusive. That's gaslighting. And I'll tell him, but, uh, you know, you do just get used to this kind of mistreatment and it just becomes second nature to you. It is a better role than being the scapegoat. It is a better role than, and the outcomes are better than being the scapegoat. You know, while the scapegoat internalizes and mentions that something's really wrong with them, something's really broken about them, this, the uh, invisible child just sort of internalizes the message that, you know, that they don't matter, that they're, that it's not worth, no, that they're not seen, that they just don't matter. And I remember and my, my older son coming to me and saying, you know, Mom, I mean, Dad's really a jerk to me. I mean, he really, you know, is awful to me. And we have a really toxic relationship, but at least we have a relationship. I mean, he doesn't even have a relationship with my brother. You know, my son saw that. And my son just recently said to me that his dad calls him. So he goes, when Noah was around, he never called me. He never called me. And he's still very, you know, doesn't hardly at all. On Father's Day, I think last year, my son, son, drove all this distance to see his dad. He drove like three hours to see his dad. And he got there for like 10 minutes. And his dad said he had to go. 
He had to go to his girlfriend's son's house. It was Father's Day. It's just all, you know, you lose one of your sons, you can't even be there for your other son. It was just the most heartless, just awful thing. Just an awful thing to And do. he's it's gone on to have a couple very, very destructive relationships with women who also treated him like his needs didn't matter and you know all that and and he what he wants more than anything is security he wants to know that he is loved and that he is just someone and that he's seen by someone and that that that's secure and it lasts forever right that's what he wants and so he he's hung on to relationships much longer than he should have when he wasn't being treated well which i also did they have a lot of anxiety about being seen they get overlooked a lot in school they don't speak up so they're kind of a quiet they're just kind of a person who doesn't create a lot of problems they're not rebellious they're not excelling either they just can and they can go they can flip go between groups they are, you know no one's they're not objectionable to anyone everyone likes them okay but they're not like a standout person they are someone that people take advantage of. It doesn't take a lot of risks. They set themselves up to be overlooked. They reproduce their childhood experiences in adult life, as most of us do. They don't learn how to execute their own vision. You know, they don't really get behind their own dreams. Like, I, there were a few things that when he was starting to like pick careers or like think about going to college, and it was just the commitment was really, really low, and even now, I'm noticing that it's just really low. I mean, he came all the way here to uh, get involved with this project that I was doing, and, and uh, you know, it's just not grabbing really hard as a mother. You know, as, as a parent, you know, your whole job is to get your kids, make, you know, raise these good people and make them ready to go out into the world and contribute a couple of great people to the world. And I have one that died, and I have one that's really struggling. If you have someone who is as aggressive and as vindictive and as toxic as their father, and then you have a bunch of, you know, narcissistic people also around you in, your, in the family. It was just, it was more than I could keep up with. It was more than I could overcome. The, the resentments and stuff that I have towards their father and family, I had gotten over it. I mean, I was pretty much resolved when I had my two kids and I had rebuilt my life and you know all of that but then when my son started struggling I was like and and when he died I mean I was just like geez how could that be I've lost everyone you know I thought I thought for sure that the plan was you're gonna protect my kids and we're gonna have this one day future and it's all gonna be fine and we were all super super close at least yeah. for an invisible child theoretically which should be true is that he can break away easier than the other ones could now the problem with this is that for him he could do that and I don't think anyone would really care, but he wants so much to have this sense of family. And coming here and just being with me and creating a new family with me is not exactly what he has in mind. He, you know, he wants to have his grandparents and all of that stuff. And, and when I got estranged, his relationship with his family got more complicated. He's a kind of a traditional conservative kind of guy, and he would love to have a big family, and so would I. We're both very family-oriented, which is, you know, particularly sad in how this happened. He lost his brother, and basically he's lost everyone. And he's also very terrified of losing me. So yeah, so they I can know. disappear easier than than the golden child for sure and the, the one that the you know narcissist parent wants to kick around the scapegoat it would definitely be the best thing for him would be to just completely break away get a fresh new start here in mexico and you know start making over himself you know learning spanish and you know just becoming a whole different kind of person that's what i hoped would happen when he came you know it's, that's what i was hoping for both of us is that we could we could create a new family here and that we could develop a new relationship as adults and friends and that we could both you know explore new interests and just you know become different people than we were able to be back up in Washington. He has a lot of grief. The grief existed before he lost his brother. Grief over the whole life loss, the, the childhood loss. This is what can happen. It's bad. It's bad. I mean, I look at it and I look at all we've lost and losing my son. Really, really bad. And it's more than anyone should ever have to endure. And I, and I also lost who my other son was, essentially. Physical abuse is very serious. And when it happens to children, it can dictate the rest of their lives. This is what can happen. This is how much they can steal. Realize.